ladies and gentlemen welcome to my channel my name is Claire and today I'm going to share my story how I changed from being a pro show a pro abortion activist to a pro life huh so let me start by giving you my my uh, delivery story so wow I have been an activist, a feminist, all my life. Until 2017, when I, I had my first child. And I carried my pregnancy till 41 weeks, six days. At that point, my OBGYN was worried about my health and the health of my child they decided to induce me. For those who don't know, induction or in inducing a, a labor, the process is the same as the process of uh, abortion. They, give, uh, they gave me medication and then the medication uh, speeded up the, the dilation of cervix and also increased or produced contraction so the baby can get out. I remember it took me 48 hours in intense pain. I'm telling you, my pain was so intense. I thought I was going to die. At a certain at a moment, I felt there's no way I was going to get out alive. It was so painful. Even now, when I think about it, it's like a nightmare. And the pain has traumatized me. It was super painful. 48 hours, epidural could not help. My baby was getting tired. And... Uh, I remember hearing the nurse saying the baby has no the, 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 the baby has no 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 heartbeat the baby has no heartbeat and I remember my daughter telling me clear push push when I had my baby I was in a, a private room there were my my, my, my family my friends I was surrounded and I had two amazing doulas. Shout out to those doulas. I had a, co a community around me. And when things were getting hard, they started praying. I remember the doula, who happened to be African American, started singing the Negro spiritual. I apologize. Sometimes I don't understand the, the history. If that term is offensive, but that's what they told me. It was Negro spiritual. And everybody, if the room was intense, no one knew that I was going to survive. Because the pain was so intense. And I had the pre eclampsia It's a disease women can have when they're delivering babies. And... I couldn't feel my contraction, I couldn't push the baby, and it was too late to do a C-section. Finally, they used a, a, a ven ventouse, that's a French word, to, pull, to suck out the baby. I remember when the baby came out, he was deformed, his head was like a, a rectangular, and the baby was now crying. And immediately the nurses rushed my baby and my baby had a difficulty uh, breathing and then he spent they rushed him to the NICU that's when my conversion story started while my baby was taken to the NICU I, I stayed in a hospital for two days and then they discharged me when they discharged me, I can't uh, explain the emotional pain. 
of going through intense labor and going through a life-changing experience and then go home drive home in a car with a car seat that was supposed to carry the baby drive home and see the the crib and the baby clothes and everything everything for me was a trigger a commercial on tv was a trigger a child crying was a trigger everything made me cry my emotion was all over the place it was an intense time for the next weeks my job was going to be to visit my baby in the NICU the doctor and healthcare providers they don't allow parents to be around during the day so the visitation hours are from 6 p.m. to midnight I remember at 5 30 I will be at the NICU door ready to burst the door so I can see my baby and sometimes I would hide and the security guard would come to find me because it was like one in the morning. I didn't want to leave my baby. Even if all those things were happening to me, my baby was a 41 weeks, fully formed, mature baby. In the NICU, I found ch children, babies, fetuses, who are 20 weeks, 22 weeks, 30 weeks. Some of the babies I saw looked like a pile of muscles and blood and vessels. It was so, it's, it's a life-changing experience to see those babies clinging on life. And all of a sudden, my pain of not having a child at home disappeared because I was looking at other babies who were way worse than my child. I learned that some of the kids didn't have people visiting them. Their moms abandoned them. So I made it a commitment to spend some time visiting those babies and singing. I will be singing the African songs. And the baby inside the, uh, the, the, the container, like glass, could not hear me. But I believed the vibe, the energies were reaching them. Because sometimes they would move the tiny hands, or the, and the, or the body would be connected to wires. Something controlling the heart, the heart. another controlling the heartbeat, and they're controlling the... The, the, the narrow system in that time that's when I realized how foolish I have been all this time to buy into the idea that the human life will start at birth God put me in a situation where I had to spend a sufficient amount of time Develop bonds with those tiny baby 15 weeks 22 weeks and Another side of the story Each day I'll come to visit my baby and they will tell me the child next died I will be heartbroken. I'll cry Because and also there was also uh, press reports there will be time a child will graduate and when um, and get allowed to go home so there was all kind of movement you would see grandpa pops moms siblings everybody coming it was it's a life-changing experience the NICU after that experience in the NICU my views about uh, uh, infants and uh, embryo and fetuses changed but I have never been so close to that level of life and see how children struggle to stay alive. I made a commitment that I'll be volunteering in the NICU. I made a commitment that if I made a sufficient amount of money, I'll be donating to the NICU and donating to, 
to those people caring for children who have nobody to visit them. Then, a few days before uh, Thanksgiving, I was discharged. The, 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 the clinic gave me a few bottles of cold milk and, um, and my baby. Till then, I couldn't believe they're giving me my baby because I was like, my God, they're going to call me and say the baby needs a vaccine, the baby needs this. I ran like I was stealing my baby. That experience humbled me. That experience made me, brought me to my knees. Ever since I don't talk about pro abortion. I didn't uh, have someone brainwash me. I have in direct contact. I developed bonds to 15 weeks babies and 20 weeks babies. And I realized that those are lives. In this video, I'm going to discuss 10 lies tell women who are getting abortion for the first time.